A secret Chinese lab in California. Two men in the U.S. Navy were charged with spying for the Chinese Communist Party, and another spy in Flushing, New York, silenced on the same day. What do they all indicate? We are in a spy war with China. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Two Chinese-born spies in the U.S. Navy have been arrested, and they've worked with the Chinese Communist Party Ministry of State Security, which is China's CIA. Leaked classified military information in exchange for money. First, I'll discuss the detail of the arrest, and then later in the episode, I'm going to explain to you how the CCP intelligence community works and what to expect when we're dealing with Communist China. Jin Chawei and Wen Hunzhao were arrested and charged with each up to 20 years in prison. Both are naturalized U.S. citizens. Jin Chawei or Patrick Wei was indicted for sending national security info to a Chinese intelligence officer, and he worked at Naval Base San Diego. Wei was approached by a Chinese intelligence officer while his application to become a U.S. citizen was still pending. Wen Heng Zhao, a petty officer who worked at Naval Base Ventura County in Port Wainimi, also sent sensitive military data to intel operatives in China. They didn't disclose if they were working for the same guy in China. Now, I posted about this on Instagram yesterday, and a viewer commented about how Chinese nationals who don't speak English or understand English are pushed through boot camp, simply because the instructors felt bad that they got through. Is this political correctness? causing things like potentially a, national, a Chinese national spy, or is just, just a simple case of their experience. I'm not saying that every Chinese national is a spy, but they are and will be approached by China and offered incentives, cash, to do so. This is not a simple issue. Just on the same day, another man in Flushing, New York, was reportedly, again with heavy ties to Chinese intelligence network, uh, reportedly committed suicide. However, from the information I can gather on this man in Flushing, his background indicate that this may be an attempt to silence him before American counter-spying could get to him. And just last weekend, we found a lab in California, in Fresno County, that was run by a secret United Front group of people out of Nevada. And it had a thousand lab mice and 20 viral and bacterial agents. Sounds like this is all a part of a bigger plan. Sounds like mission impossible to me. Well, it's actually real. We're just hearing the tip of the iceberg on the CCP's vast network of spies and unrestricted warfare operations in America. China just announced a new initiative to mobilize all citizens to be spies. And their July counter-espionage law targets American companies in China over spy charges. And this announcement comes from the same ministry that was getting intel from these two sailors. So this is going to affect Americans in China. Uh, remember the two Michaels, the two Canadians that were detained in China in a hostage exchange situation when the Canadians arrested Meng Wanzhou of Huawei? And this could very much happen to Americans in China too. So here's the bigger picture. We're in a cold war with China, and despite what the politicians may tell you otherwise, a, a distinct aspect of the cold war was spying and counter-spying. And since last year, the United States has been ramping up efforts to dig out CCP spies in America. They found two in connection to the CCP police station in Manhattan, Chinatown. And now they're finding two more sailors who have been in contact with China's Ministry of State Security to give away U.S. military information. So we're quite nice to the people that we catch. We give them a sentence. Uh, they get prison terms instead of what the CCP does. The CCP is brutal in dealing with American spies and informants. In the last decade, the CCP has killed at least a dozen of the CIA sources. And according to three of the officials, one was shot in front of his colleagues in a courtyard of a government building. So that's, of course, to send a message to those others who might be trying to work with the CIA. Now, according to CIA Director Bill Burns, they've restored the informant network in China over the years. But that also tells us another thing, right? It means that now China will be able to dig up those informants once again. Now that the U.S. government is moving on China's spies in America, there's a big chance that we will see retaliation in the form of hostage taking. They will to the extreme punish Chinese people who gave intelligence to Americans and then to any U.S. citizens in China, they could be used as hostages. So let's dive into the man in Flushing. Jason Lam or Jian Xin Lam was found dead in Flushing and he is the chairman of the Overseas Chinese Federation among other United Front Group titles. And he has extensive connections with Fujian province, which includes people that ran the CCP police station. Uh, they were also from Fujian. Now, he may not directly have connections, or at least that we know of, with those two that were arrested for the CCP police station. His background in China does indicate that he is a special person to the uh, Communist Party. 
Now, he is a member of the Guangdong Political Consultative Conference, which is a United Front organization. And what we say as United Front basically means that it's a system that the CCP used to co-opt uh, its enemies into becoming spies and work for them. Now, United Front work is one of the three magical weapons that the CCP leader Mao Zedong famously said that helped him win the civil war in China. So it's spying, it's co-opting, it's intelligence gathering, it's turning people against their own organization. So it's subversion and active infiltration. And according to people familiar with what happened, on August 1st, Lam was in a business dispute with several participants at a dinner in New York, and he left and returned to his condo in Flushing. Now this building is being confused as a hotel. It is not. It's an apartment building where Lam likely owns a unit. Now his partner Xie Fun visited Lam's room on the evening and uh, he could not reach him, so the next day he was found dead. Now to understand what we're dealing with, we have to study why this happens. The CCP's intelligence operation network is vast. It's huge. But it's actually pretty simple. Now, before we do talk about that, you have to understand uh, the CCP has doctrines that basically allows anybody to be turned into a spy, whether they're Chinese or American. And they can also incorporate civilian projects like the Thousand Talents program to recruit individuals with key technological understandings, which is basically taking what they learned in America and then getting them to go back to China. It's a form of intellectual property transfer. So again, that's spying in a different sense. Now, before we get started on this part, if you enjoy the content so far, please leave a like and comment below what your thoughts are on the topic, and also leave a subscription for us so our channel can grow. All right, let's talk about this. So the CCP knows that money is a great factor in getting people to spy. And if they offer you enough incentives, many people may not realize what they're doing could land them in jail. And even if they do, it seems like the rewards uh, matter to them so much more. Okay. What we'll focus on is the main spy groups that would reach out to these people today. As you may know that when most people hear about intelligence or is spying, you think of the three letter agencies in the United States, right? You have the FBI, the CIA, NSA, and maybe something like DNI, which stands for the uh, Director of National Intelligence. Now under the DNI's office, there are 18 organizations, right? There's the DIA and various branch of the military intelligence groups. China basically is the same. It has both a government side and the military side of the intelligence, but with two exceptions. The first one is that the Communist Party itself also has an intelligence arm. And the second exception is a fourth pseudo-intelligence group, which we've just covered. It's called United Front. Let's talk about the first exception. So the CCP organization has three types of spy agencies. You have the government agencies like the Ministry of State Security, which were the involvement with the sailors. Uh, and the military has, of course, it's a party military, but it also has a spy arm, and it's called the Intelligence Bureau of the Joint Staff Department of the Central Military Commission. Now, with a party intelligence, think of it like if the Democrats or Republicans had their own intelligence agency on top of the CIA and the FBI, among others. Now, the name of theirs is called International Liaison Office. What the Liaison Office does is really, it's, it's utmost of mystery to us. Uh, on the surface, the office says they simply engage in diplomacy. Sounds like it's just a diplomatic channel. Well, German's counterintelligence agency already listed that liaison office as a spy agency, so it is definitely not just some simple diplomatic office. But that's not all. For example, based on a declassified now CIA report from 1971, it says the office is mainly responsible for improving relations with the West. Quote, liaison department of the Chinese Communist Party has been given new duties, particularly in the realm of improving the Communist Party's relations with governing Communist parties abroad. And also, quote, the ILD, which is a liaison office, is no longer obliged to implement the revolutionary counterproductive policy of trying to export the Cultural Revolution, but instead is now charged with fostering reconciliation with friendly governing communist parties and a more relaxed line toward the communist parties in non-communist countries. So to summarize, at least in the 1970s, the CCP used that liaison office to engage with overseas communist groups in various different countries. Now, was them trying to start what is essentially a communist revolution in those countries, or simply trying to export uh, the ideas of that using overseas groups, and then perhaps also they could be gathering intelligence? Well then, today when we think about that, that aspect has been replaced by overseas Chinese associations, and the role has largely been, been taken up by the United Front Department, which means shouldn't that liaison office become redundant? Well, not quite. 
the liaison office engages at the highest level of the party for spying operations. And so think of it like the dark stuff that the CIA actually does, none of us know about. Uh, most of what you hear today about the, whether that's the two spies in the Navy or those working in the CCP police station, they've been dealing with the Ministry of State Security, which is more like the government intelligence agency. And now it mostly engages in cyber operations, hacking, theft, and such, but is used also to connect spies who can provide useful classified intel. And of course, today, many of that includes military secrets. So it's more targeted towards civilians and lower level government employees, but it is considered the same as the CIA, as we can see uh, when it comes to working to gather intelligence overseas. Now, for that second exception, earlier we briefly discussed something called the United Front. Now, the man that allegedly, I think, didn't commit suicide in Flushing, well, he is a member of the United Front. And his job is basically to co-opt societal groups and to assert influence that is, uh, of course, pro-CCP. Now, they often engage in work with business and political uh, contributions overseas, but can be called into question by the Chinese spy agencies should they hold key intel. And then there's that lab in California. And that was supposedly run by something called a Prestige Biotech Incorporate, uh, which is out of Nevada. And that's also tied to United Front groups in Nevada. So the reason I'm talking about all this is that the likely reason as to why he could have been silenced is that he holds information that would have been useful to Americans should he get caught, like those that were charged and arrested uh, for that CCP police station. The question is, does all this intelligence gathering by China end up in Xi Jinping's hands? Well, not directly. The equivalent of the DNI, Director of National Intelligence, is a member of the Politburo Standing Committee. Right now, my best guess is Tsai Chi, since he oversees the propaganda, intelligence, and all of those things. It seems like the intelligence information would end up in his hand, and if it is important, it will be briefed to Xi Jinping. All right, that's it today on the episode of the US-China Spy War. And if you enjoy the content, leave a like and comment below what your thoughts are. And also, subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content, and uh, we'll leave it here. All right, I'm David Zhang, this is China Insider. See you next time.